فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل واشهد ان سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى اله واصحابه والتابعين لهم باحسان الى يوم الدين اما بعد ان شاء الله تعالى today we're going to carry on من وصايا السلف للشباب the advice is that the pious predecessors gave to the youths ومن جملة وصايا السلف للشباب from the advices that the pious predecessors gave to the youth is ما جاء عن جعفر قال that which جعفر said كان ثابت البناني رحمه الله that ثابت البناني who was a slave for أنس بن مالك رضي الله تعالى عنه يخرج إلينا وقد جلسنا في القبلة فيقول he came out one day and he sat with us في القبلة in the, in the, towards the Qibla أما in the Qibla فيقول and he would say يا معشر الشباب أو youngsters حلتم بيني وبين ربي أن أسجد له you got between me and Allah for me to prostrate for him and, the, and this was that he Thabit al-Bunani indulged in talking and conversing with them that he didn't pray and this is something that the Salaf would advise the youth regarding they would come and they would unite and they would meet one another in the masjid but they would spend the time in that masjid by conversing and talking and chit-chatting about worldly matters And so they wouldn't read Qur'an or they wouldn't study or learn or benefit from their time by either praying or by doing dhikr. But what they would do is they will have worldly dialogue and worldly conversation. So this would get between them and praying. It would get in between them and praying. So they don't busy themselves with ibadah and the remembrance of Allah. And so they leave this. So what is required from the youngsters and the youth is that he observes that the, the house of Allah is, is a sacred place. And what it means to honor the masjid of Allah, the house of Allah, is that you don't busy yourself in talking about worldly affairs, insignificant things. That preoccupy you from what? عن العبادة والطمأنينة والخشوع في الصلاة That it busies you from ibadah, tranquility and humility in the prayer Especially nowadays One of the things that we're all tested with in different forms and shapes Is وسائل الاتصال Social media Using the telephone So the youngster or the youth he may not even be talking to somebody and he may not be conversing with anybody but what he'll be doing is he'll be on his phone all the time he'll be responding to a people he would be indulged into social media whatsapp he will be on twitter facebook he'll be responding to a phone call and he will spend all his time in the masjid doing that sometimes so much so, he will open tashwish. He will basically busy and preoccupy and, 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 and what do you call it? Distract the other people who are in the masjid. So they can't even attain uh, ease and quietness from him. So that was the ninth advice. al wasiyatul ashira The tenth advice, which is from the advice of the Salaf, Towards the youth is مَا جَاعًا Muhammad ibn Sawqa That which Muhammad ibn Sawqa said He said لَقَنِي إِلَقِيَنِي مَيْمُونِ بِنْ مِهْرَانٍ فَقُلْتُ Muhammad ibn Sawqa said I met Maymun ibn Mihran فَقُلْتُ I said to Maymun ibn Mihran 
حياك الله may Allah give you life فقال he said to me هذه تحية الشباب this is the greeting of the youngsters and the youth قل بالسلام say السلام عليكم also the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said من بدأ بالكلام قبل السلام فلا تجيبوه the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم he said anyone who starts speech with you first before greeting you don't respond to them don't respond to them ibn sunni narrated this in his kitab amal al yawm wal layla and sheikh muhammad nasir al din al albani authenticated it in his kitab silsila ahadith al sahiha so what is it that maymun ibn mihran was saying that the word hayyak allah is a, a kind of greeting that is put forward by who by the youths and nowadays if you look at the youths today and they are meeting one another they have this own way of speaking to them to, to, speaking to each other the way they greet each other oh yo how are you doing and other ways that they greet each other so they've left off the islamic greeting assalamu alaikum they've boycotted it and they've made up their own way of speaking to each other so Maymun ibn Mehran, he advised Muhammad ibn Sawqa to not do this type of greeting. And this greeting is nothing wrong about it, shara'an, which is hayyak Allah. But what, is it, what does it do? What does it do? It kind of removes and it makes the individual boycott the prophetic, the prophetic type of greeting, which is assalamu alaikum. Sometimes a person may even come and they talk to somebody and they converse with somebody and they chat with somebody and then after that they say salam alaikum. And our messenger alayhi salatu salam, he told us that the person who starts talking to you first without any greeting, then do not respond to them. Do not what? Do not respond to them. So it's important that the youngsters and the youth take on board this advice of Maymun ibn Mihran in which he gave to Muhammad ibn Sokha. Muhammad ibn Sokha was a young youth. So the, he said, this is the kind of greeting that comes from the youth. Al-Wasiyyatu Al-Hadi Ashara. The 11th advice. It is Ma ja'an Abi Malih. Abi Malih said, Qala lana Maymun ibn Mihran wa nahnu hawlahu. Maymun ibn Mihran said, we were around him and he said to us, Ya ma'ashar al-shabab, O youth, O youngsters, Quwwatukum ij'aluha fi shababikum, wa nashatakum fi ta'atillah, Ya ma'ashar al-shuyukhi hatta mata. Jemaymoon ibn Mihran, he said, O youngsters and youth, put your power and your effort towards your youth, whilst you're young. وَنَشَاطَكُمْ فِي طَاعَةِ اللَّهِ And put your enthusiasm in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he turned towards the elders and he said, يَا مَعْشَرَ الشُّيُوخِ O you who are elderly in age. حَتَّى مَتَى When are you guys going to go and um, benefit yourselves in obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So what is it that Maymun ibn Mahran advises here? Maymun ibn Mahran, what he advises here is istighlal quwwati shabab Benefiting from the strength and the power that you have when you're a youngster and a youth. And the enthusiasm that you have and the energy that you have in what? Fi ta'atillahi azza wa jalla in the obedience of Allah. Wa ma yuqarribu ilayhi and that which will bring you closer to him. And that which will bring you and that which will bring you closer to him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So to benefit from your time. Death does not care about the age of a person. And it doesn't bother, it doesn't concern him how old you are. You can be a young person, you can be an elderly person. When the day it comes to you, death, you're gonna go. 
And what's going to be awaiting for you on the other side is the effort and the hard work that you put in. So it's to benefit from the age and the youthness that you have today. That is something, inshallah ta'ala, that, that will allow you to grow in positions the day of judgment. al wasiyyatu al ashara The twelfth advice. عن الفريابي فريابي يسر كان سفيان الثو كان كان سفيان الثوري سفيان الثوري رحمه الله was one يصلي ثم يلتفت إلى الشباب فيقول إذا لم تصل اليوم فمتى سفيان الثوري he used to pray and then when he prays what he used to do was يلتفت إلى الشباب he would look at the youths in the masjid and the youngsters and he will say to them, إِذَا لَمْ تُصَلُّوا الْيَوْمَ If you guys don't pray today, then when are you going to pray? This is an advice from Sufyan al thawri to the youngsters and the youth. A great advice. Which is to benefit from this age that they're in, Shabab. If the person does not benefit from marhala to Shababihi, if he doesn't benefit from his age of being a youth, in what? Fis sujood in prostration. Then the person will become weak. He will grow older. His body parts will become weak. And he's going to wish that he becomes a young person so he can prostrate as much as he could have. So if you don't pray today, then when are you going to pray? Al wasiyyatu al ashara. The thirteenth advice. ما جاء الربيعة ابن كلثوم من أنه قال نظر إلينا الحسن ونحن حوله شباب فقال ربيعة ابن كلثوم من he said حسن البصري looked at us. And Imam Hassan al Basri he looked at the youngsters and the youth. And he said to them, يا معشر الشباب أو youngsters and youth. أما تشتاقون إلى حور العين؟ Do you not desire and do you not want the حور العين, the women of Jannah? And this is very powerful from Hassan al Basri. He's reminding them the blessings of Jannah and the bliss that are in Jannah and the things that a person desires, ملذات الجنة. And that which is from the masarrat of Jannah, that will bring you joy and happiness. Especially the fact that these are youngsters and they're youths. And hurul ain is something that youngsters and youths would love. So this would make them what? Work hard. And make sure that they fulfill their lust and their desires in the hereafter as it's better for them than his dunya. And that... Also, what you take from Hassan al Basri's advice here is that it's about placing hope in the people's hearts and reminding them of the good that they can attain and not scaring people necessarily and making them look forward to something. And Allah said in the Quran, وَمَنْ أَرَادَ الْآخِرَةَ وَسَعَى لَهَا سَعْيَهَا وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنْ فَأُولَٰئِكَ كَانَ سَعْيُهُمْ مَشْكُورًا وَمَنْ أَرَادَ الْآخِرَةَ The person who wants the day of judgment. وَسَعَى لَهَا سَعْيَهَا And he strives for it. He works for the hereafter. وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنًا He's in a state of iman. Allah says, فَأُولَٰئِكَ كَانَ سَعْيُهُمْ مَشْكُورًا Those ones, their striving is praiseworthy. And from the things that you will attain, the hereafter are the women of Jannah the food of Jannah and the drinking of Jannah. al wasiyatul rabi'ata ashar The fourteenth advice is ma ja'ani al-hasan al-basriyu aydha Hassan al-basriyu also said Ya ma'ashar al-shabab youngsters Iyakum wa taswifa Stay away from sofa I will stay away from that so fa'af'alu, so fa'af'alu. Stay away from, I will do, I will do, 
I will do. Stay away from that. Don't have this prob don't have this issue of delaying things. So for at all, I will repent. So for salati, I will in the future safeguard my prayer and make sure I pray correctly. So for I will aburru walidayya. I will be obedient towards my parents and upright towards them. Don't be one who's like that. This is called tulul amal. You're giving yourself and you're assuring yourself that you're going to have a long life. This concept of a tasweef, so for I will, is what really brings about what? A person never to do anything and never to hasten and that person will never benefit. Rather that person will delay and delay and delay and delay that he will never ever come to doing it. The qa'idah is don't leave a repentance of today for tomorrow. Because you're going to have to repent for tomorrow's mistakes as well. So today's repentance, so today's shortcomings and today's sins, you need to repent for it today, not for tomorrow. Al Wasiyatul Khamis Ashara, the last and final advice that the pious predecessors gave from the series that we were doing, Mi Wasaya Salafi Lil Shabab, is Maja'an Hafsa binti Sirin. Hafsa binti Sirin, the sister of Muhammad ibn Sirin. And Naha Qalat that she said, Ya Ma'ashara Shabab, O youngsters, Khudu min anfusikum wa antum Shabab. He said, she said, Radiallahu ta'ala anha, O youngsters and youth, take your affairs whilst you're young. Wallahi, by Allah, ma I never saw actions in its complete form illa fi shababi when you're young. Wallahi, when you're young and you're a shab, it is from al-a'zam al-marahil, it's from the greatest period of time. It is called, some of the ulama used to call it, marhalatul khayri, the stage of good. But it's only good in wuffiq al-shab. If the youth, Allah gives him the tawfiq and the ability to benefit from it. Whereas the other one, who jokes around and he plays, and he destroys his time, he follows his desires and what his nafs is inclined to. Or he even does that which is haram. Billah. He punishes his nafs in committing sins. Then this person has really caused a great damage to his future. He has caused a great damage to his own nafs. So my beloved brothers and sisters, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us those who benefit from this stage that we're in. This age that Allah has given us, those who recognize its value and its importance. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also allow those who are heedless and unaware of the value of what they have right now. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow them to understand and recognize it and to come and to come with it. That was what all that all that we could go through and point out. Wa asalullah, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rabbil Arsh al Adima bi asma'i al Husna wa Sifati al Ula, and you are fiqan alima yuhibu wa yarda, min sadid al Akwali wa salih al Amal, wa an yusli halana shanana kulla, wa alla yakilna ila anfusina tarfa ta'inin, wa an yahdiana ila sirat in mustakim. وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين